So I've made no secret of the fact that I'm pretty happy with where Starfield is right now ever since the uh, May 15th, 2024 patch. I think before that it was a good game. It has now become a great game and they're doing more things to it in the future, such like with the uh, upcoming land vehicles. Uh, I'm assuming we're getting more than one. Um, the fact that the modding stuff is still coming in the pipeline. We've got the uh, expansion, the DLC coming in the pipeline. And those are just sort of all the plans that were around the launch of the game. But there still is the future of Starfield. What, is that, what does the future hold? What does that look like um, in terms of beyond the DLC? So I've seen a lot of commentary on YouTube over the last couple of weeks as we've seen this resurgence of interest in Starfield again. Um, and I kind of wanted to take some of those comments, look at some of the ones that are realistic and things that I think we can look forward to in the future of Starfield. And then some other ones that are just completely unrealistic from people who have no clue about game development and just should put them out of your minds because it's not going to happen. But it's an interesting thing because... I think when we look at the future of Starfield, it's very, very bright, um, especially considering the basis of what we have. I do need to take a drink of my coffee before we get going. So this is the perfect moment for me to say like, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Daily streams happen between here and on Twitch. There's a Patreon and a Discord. I do sci-fi and fantasy. You'll find all the links down below. Let me finish this off and we'll get started. So... One of the biggest things that has me excited uh, about the future of Starfield is a thousand planets. Now, I know there has been criticism that when you start talking about the fact that these are generally speaking procedurally generated planets, that can lead to some repetitiveness in the asset packs that are used to draw from when things are being procedurally created, whether it's terrain, structures, so on and so forth. At some point, if you go do enough planets, you are going to start to see little things that pop out at you. And that's a legitimate criticism to have, but that's just the way procedural generated content works. You cannot have an infinite array of things to create because there has to be some sort of human check on those to make sure that all the bits and pieces are going to fit together and that the LODs are working and that it all hashes out properly. Um, and as a result, that means that man hours go into triple checking, quadruple checking, etc. to make sure that it all passes muster. And at some point, the human factor is always going to be a limitation. So when it comes to procedurally generated stuff, um, I totally get the good criticisms about some of the things being repetitive if you've explored enough planets but what has me excited about the thousand planets is the fact that there are a thousand planets so when you think about the potential for future expansions and future content patches and future storylines um, not even talking about the modding scene yet i'm just talking about official content from bethesda they have basically in my mind a nearly limitless amount of you know in terms of places they could go so they could choose to say, hey, we have an alien invasion going on over in these in this sector, in this system with these 10 planets. Or, hey, something's happening over here. There's a time, time warp thing, blah, 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 blah. There's lots of storylines they could do, lots of places to inject story with the planets that the game launched with. So that gives them a runway far into the future for content drops. Now, we already have the basis of a really good gunplay system. Melee combat could probably use a little bit of love from what I've heard. I don't use a lot of melee, but I've never been, it's never felt that satisfactory as opposed to the, the melee in Cyberpunk 2077 it feels really good. So I think that the melee combat could use some work. Whether or not that's going to happen, I think, is up in the air. But the gunplay feels good. We've got a great range of guns. Everything's moddable. Um, guns are easy to add to the game. Uh, weapons are easy to add to the game. Um, and that's all there. The base starship system is in place in terms of building ships. And then with the interior decoration stuff that just came with the May 15th update, being able to have now modules that are completely um, empty when you're building, that allows there to be a arguably near infinite array of ships that you could build and customize and modify. And of course, they can add to that over time with additional habitats, modules, and additional things that you can craft in game for your uh, ships and outposts. So talking about things like chairs and sofas and fridges and wall hangings and all this other stuff. There's a lot of ways that that could go and expand into the future. On top of which we have the outpost building system, which exists in you know a pretty amazing state as it is and it has since launch, but that's something that can easily be amplified over time as well with additional resources um, that are created to harvest and additional modules that you can build and so on and so forth. So that's all there. Then that kind of bleeds into the 
the you know the modding scene, which is something that hasn't even really. I mean, it's kind of there, but it hasn't really started because the creator kit hasn't fully been launched yet. So that's a big, big, big part of what a lot of people are anticipating is the future of Starfield is what it's going to look like once the modders can fully get their hands on things and start taking this massive space system and saying, well, I'm going to create Star Trek in space. No, no, I want Babylon 5 in space. No, no, I want Star Wars in space. No, 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 no. I want insert your favorite fantasy, you know, Stargate SG-1, whatever. People are going to go out there and create their own worlds within this universe which is really, really cool. And when you're going back to the Thousand Planets and all this other stuff that's already there for the base game to enjoy, that's a really cool future in terms of what the modding community is going to do. So, yeah, we've got an official DLC coming in the pipeline, and we already have all these basic structures, but knowing that there's a Thousand Planets and all this base stuff that you've already got working, the leveling system, the perk system, the weapon play, the starship combat, the star, you know, starship crafting system, the... Um, the outpost building system and the resource development and all the crafting and modding and all that stuff is, is already there and ready to go. And so we have this foundation layer that's going to allow this to become something bigger on its own based on what the community does with it beyond the launch game and the DLC. Now, the things that won't change, and I think this is an area where we get into some people have very unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. Um, the one thing I've seen is like, oh, they need to get rid of loading screens. That's never going to happen. It's just not. This game is built in the way that it's built on the engine that it's built on to work that way. Many, many games do it this way. Baldur's Gate 3 had tons of loading screens. Lots of games have loading screens. Not every game is designed like Cyberpunk 2077 to where it's this seamless, open world, no loading screen environment. So wishing for there to be no loading screens for Starfield, it's never going to happen. They're not going to be able to change that base structure because of the way the engine is and the way they program the game it's all based on scenes if you've never done game dev i can understand why you might be confused by that but anybody who's ever done game dev or if you've done any modding whatsoever this is not something that can be easily changed in the future if you know starfield 2 whenever that comes down or, you know around the pipeline that could be something where they could choose to make it seamless with different changes to the engine. Whether they stay with the same engine or they go to an improved version of the engine, that's a decision they would have to make prior to actually starting to design the game because you would need to build the infrastructure and get the engineering done before you actually do any of the world building and anything else. So that's a future conversation. It's never gonna change for the base game, so I think people just need to get that out of their minds. Um, and with that is the idea of manually landing and taking off from planets. Um, I don't see that ever being something that's going to be a reality either based on the same loading screens discussion. The way that the planets are loaded and the way it is procedurally generated from some of these things when you're landing on planets, others are static POIs and static places. Like if you go to Sidonia and you're landing in Sidonia, that square that you land in has already been predetermined. It's got you know, these waypoints for the quests that you have. Now, the rest of the planet, you can go out and explore and find things that are procedurally generated. But that part of it is what it is. And when you think about that, the way they have the lo the, the landing animations and the takeoff land animations is that's just the loading screen for you loading onto the planet and then you loading back into space. Um, so that's not ever going to change. This has never been a game that was promised to be a, a flight sim like Elite Dangerous or, or Star Citizen. So that's another one that people just need to put out of their minds. But that doesn't mean that the exploration component is lost. It's just it's a different way of doing things. It's not manual takeoff and landing. I don't mind it because I like the, the animations. So for me, it's one of those things where I'm okay with it. So I just wanted to get those two little things out of the way because I think once you get beyond those two little things, if you can understand that those are never going to change, focus on the things that are really cool about the future. So landing vehicles, um, these land vehicles that are coming, they've said they're working on the first of the land vehicles was the commentary that they dropped before the May 15th patch, which leads one to suggest or leads one to think that they are suggesting that there may be future land vehicles that they're going to be working on this might just be the first of many. Um, and also, they might just be referring to this is the one that we're building, and then after this, modders are going to be able to take this and do whatever they want with and create other types of land vehicles as well. But land vehicles are going to be a big deal for exploration, especially now that they've changed the way the maps work 
with the new surface map system. And if you're not familiar with that, you need to go watch my video on how the new surface maps work because it's no longer just about the grids. Um, it's not just procedurally generated grids anymore. It's it's open roaming. It's generating as you move in a direction. The map moves with you. It's, it's really cool. Um, quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. Knowing that that's working the way it's working now, adding land vehicles into that mixture, it's going to make the exploration of planets uh, a lot more entertaining for those of us who didn't necessarily like just running around on jetpacks. I never complained about the fact that there was only jetpacks, but in the back of my mind, it was always like, it would be really cool if they did add land vehicles. And now that they are, it's like, yeah, that's, that's an awesome... That's an awesome feature that's going to be getting added to it. What we don't know story-wise is where they're going with um, the DLC. Because again, talking about, we've already established a couple of things. One, we have a universe with a thousand planets, right? Which gives us a nearly infinite playground. But then also we have the new game plus mode, which, which we then realize, oh, we are now in multiple dimension state. We are, we're talking quantum dimensions here. So we are going through over and over and over, and each time we're getting a slightly different universe. That leads to not only the infinite array of, you know, not infinite, but, you know, a thousand planets, you know, for the system, but then every time you do a new game plus mode, you're getting something that is completely different and is, you know, has lots of different moderations, uh, modifications, not moderations, modifications. And as modders dive into that and expand upon that even more, you're going to see even bigger and better things. So when I look at the future of Starfield, I look at everything that's been done with like Fallout 4 in terms of the mods, and then I look at things like Skyrim and everything that's been done with the mods. You know, um, when I first got my Xbox Series X, I bought the big anniversary edition that had just come out for Skyrim, which had like fishing and all this other stuff, and it had like all of these officially supported mods that had been added to the game over time, all in one big package that you could access. And I look at this as being a game that has that potential of, say, 10 years down the road. We have so many mods and so many things for it that we can continue to see tons of great content. Um, and the only downside that I see is because Bethesda takes so long to develop games, and this is a, a crunch point that we may be seeing change uh, with the acquisition under Microsoft, because Microsoft may decide to come in and say, yeah, you know what, Bethesda, we want you to scale up. You need to scale up your production because we don't want you to take you know, 10 years between titles. We need you to hurry up and get out new games every five years or whatever it is. So, you know, you're working on Elder Scrolls 6 now, get that out the door because we need another Fallout game. We also need another, you know, Starfield game. Let's get these things out the door. Let's not wait 10, 15 years in between, you know, because managing big, big IPs like this where they've got Fallout, they've got Elder Scrolls, they've got Starfield now, that's a lot on your table. Um, and if they're only focused on one thing at a time, you're looking at these six to eight year development cycles between them. And if it's if you're Starfield and you were the most recent one that came out, well, guess what? We got to wait because Elder Scrolls 6 has to happen and there's probably going to be a new Fallout game that, that's going to happen at some point given the success of the TV shows and everything. Um, so it remains to be seen how soon we're going to be getting additional DLC beyond um, the I think it's Shattered Stars is what it's called. I always want to say Shattered Skies, but it's Shattered Stars. Anyway, for me... The future of Starfield is bright. There are still some things that, you know, that there are there are definitely some critiques about the game, and I think that's totally fair. I'm not saying it's a 10 out of 10 experience, but it is a good game that is getting better as we go along. And I look to the future of Starfield, and I see nothing but stars ahead, man. I see nothing but stars and bright skies, because there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming on the pipeline, not just from them, but also from the modding community. Um, as we get deeper and deeper into this, and what are you doing running around, buddy? And he's running around, so I gotta wrap this up and put him to bed. So let her hear your thoughts and your comments. Put them down there below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams here and on Twitch. There's a Discord and a Patreon if you want to get involved with my sci-fi and fantasy stuff. Links are down below. You ready to go get your bed, Smeagol? Yeah. All right. See you the next time, guys.